Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. The Declaration of Independence says that this country was built on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not only is this the foundations of this country, but it's also used by the Ford Motor Corporation to manipulate us into buying large trucks to haul shit we don't need. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. You get life. That's, that's a given. I mean, it's an unnecessary thing to say. If you're born, you get life. Unless you're a Dracula or a zombie, this is a given. I mean, th this part of the declaration is why you have people protesting Planned Parenthood with grotesque and graphic picket signs. You get liberty. This is defined as the freedom to believe what you want to believe and live the aforementioned given life the way you want to, without any oppression. We're given this, but we don't want anybody to have it because we keep fighting over how people should live their lives and what they should believe. But we aren't given happiness, just the option to pursue it, chase it like a drug. Our forefathers meant to give us a little taste of happiness and then they want you to keep looking around for it, you know, for that, for that next hit, for that next smile or the next giggle. And if you're looking for that elusive laugh, you better be ready to pay for it. And this document is kept in place to remind us that we'll never feel as good as that first giggle we had way back as a wee babe. But it's difficult to be happy when so much of our given life is revolving around money and the importance we put on it. We are told that our happiness is linked to how much money we make, how much shit we can stuff into our cookie cutter homes and how many happy meals we can stuff into our faces. McDonald's should not be associating itself with happiness. I've been in several McDonald's and nobody is happy to be there. Okay, the employees are upset that they're getting paid minimum wage to get people their maximum weight. Okay, their customer isn't happy that they need this sad gray meat stuck between two squished buns and plastic cheese and your body isn't happy about getting rid of everything that you just ingested because it has to flush the whole system, including that kale smoothie you had earlier today. And just the fact that their mascot is a clown means they're like the antithesis of happiness. Clowns are faux happy. Really, they're sad people who wear heavy makeup to hide their actual feelings. Clowns are not really a symbol of happiness anymore. They are a symbol of fear and circus tents. And look, McDonald's is only one of the symptoms of this happiness pursuit we have in this country. We put way more value on the idea of making money than doing something meaningful, something that actually has value. So right now, we have a bunch of jobs that mean nothing and are monotonous and tire you out so you can't actually chase happiness. According to Barry Schwartz, the author of Why We Work, we are told the only incentive to work is money. We work because we have to, more or less because we're told to. It's why we take any job and it's why the automation and universal basic income arguments are fought tooth and nail because we need people to make those teeth and nails and if you give people free money we'll just all be toothless and nailless at least that's the argument made against ubi and look i've talked about universal basic income in another episode and what the benefits of it are and everything but let's explore another aspect of it back in the 70s Canada experimented with universal basic income. Okay, Canada was still a freshman at that time, okay? Very impressionable about capitalism. So Canada was experimenting with UBI and immigration and, and empathy, which are very dangerous when it's all supposed to be about the corporate state, okay? It needs some American influence to set it straight. When University of Manitoba professor Evelyn Forget dug through the dusty boxes, she discovered that people who received UBI had less doctor's visits for mental health issues because of the decreased stigma towards welfare. They did go to the doctor for something that their 
face was doing, but professionals determined that their facial expression was just a thing called smiling. Now, some people did quit their job, but this was like the first time they were able to take a vacation. It also decreased the rate of boss murder fantasies and tie nooses. It eradicated fake sick days. It also decreased the amount of teens who work, which means that they had more time to spend on learning and being kids. Mostly, they were working less to enjoy their lives with their families instead of doing monotonous shit. They re-upped their education, followed their passion, and were able to monetize them. And people wouldn't be mad that passions were being monetized. But universal basic income is only half the issue. Universal basic income also goes hand in hand with automation because those repetitive tasks are not going away. But it does solve the problem of human error and general boredom at those kind of jobs. Manufacturing is going to be around to make the shit that we need. So instead of small Chinese children making your iPhones, it'll be tiny little Chinese robots, which is just as adorable. No more waitresses dealing with drunk college kids all the time. Robots don't put up with ass grabbing, mostly because they don't have asses to be grabbed. Antiquated jobs are put in place to distract us so we don't have to think about attaining happiness. They become a thing of the past, similar to our forefathers. Look, if you're against automation, just remember, there were people that were probably against cars when they first came out. All the allies of horses and the union of stagecoach drivers probably rallied against this metal beast that culturally appropriated the power of the horse. And if you're against automation because it's mean to robots and it will inevitably lead to a hostile takeover, just remember, robots don't have feelings. Humans can barely understand our own feelings, so we aren't going to invent something that feels better than we do. Sorry, Philip K. Dick fans. A more relaxed and educated population means that the system in place can't distract you with a monotonous job, so the system can perpetuate constant wars to keep our guaranteed liberty in place. War on terror, created by America. War on drugs, created by America, and racism. War on women, created by penises. So America's off the hook on that one. Changing the way we think about our jobs and employment helps us realize we need meaning in our lives. Figuring out how to make our passions our work. Some people say that happiness comes from doing what you want. They say it's selfish, and meaning comes from serving something bigger than yourself. So finding happiness in your meaning is contradictory. And I agree in some respects. Serving one another is serving something bigger than ourselves, but that argument can also be used to say that we serve the rampant plague of the capitalistic and corporate system that makes us bend over backwards for scraps. It also means that the CEOs and the billionaires are unhappy and unfulfilled because they followed a selfish path. So in order for them to have meaning, they should probably serve the bigger purpose of helping people. The bigger meaning argument is not just about how we live, but what happens after we die. We're not doing good because it's good for us and the larger purpose of the species. We want to leave behind a legacy, so one day they can make up lies about us in the history textbooks, and when the next animal takes over, they'll see all the statues we built of the Koch brothers. And maybe those animals can figure out that the Koch brothers are actually demons in meat suits wearing regular suits. Really, our meaning comes from each other. You know, as humans, as higher primates, we're tr communal and tribal and depend on each other. So if you need the help of someone to follow your passions and then they know that they can depend on you to return the favor, our meaning doesn't come from some grand gesture. This isn't a romantic comedy. 
it's just life. All we're doing is expanding on that age-old saying, happy wife, happy life. It's now happy species longevity. Okay, it's not as catchy, but it's way less misogynistic and homophobic, and it's a lot truer. Happiness leads to people being healthier and means that they don't need a bunch of pills that they need to shove in their face every day, which means that the pharmaceutical industry continues to push old ideals to ensure that we aren't happy and need to buy more pills that we don't really need. Now, they say you can't buy happiness. Big Pharma hasn't been able to make that in pill form and then make us chase it. And if they did, I'm sure that we would instate a war on happiness, say no to smiles. It'll all be a ploy to legalize happiness in 40 years in an attempt to tax laughter. But with how much value we put on money, you can buy the notion of happiness. But feigning happiness is actually pretty unhealthy. Every dollar bill should come with a Surgeon General's warning. Warning. Will not fill the void of not being loved by anyone. According to a Gallup poll from 2013, only about 13% of people are doing what they want and what makes them happy. 65% of people are disengaged and depressed at work. Those people who aren't finding meaning in what they're doing are usually the ones masturbating furiously at work to pass the time. Usually happy and more meaningful jobs are the ones that use the power of your brain. Creative, problem-solving, philosophy-based jobs. The ones that can't be physically quantified by money. It's the type of job which leads to more creation and critical thinking. Jobs that lead to the evolution of our minds and possibly the betterment of our species. But the value we put on money and greed surpasses that of our thoughts. We act out with war, manipulative advertising, and masturbating in our cubicles. The idea of pursuing happiness is an open invitation to set up a system that stomps on its populace and keeps them subjugated with the notion that if they keep their heads down, follow the rules, dis get distracted by shit that they don't need, they might, one day, right before they die, they might get to happy. Psychologist Viktor Frankl says that happiness cannot be pursued, it must ensue. One must have a reason to be happy. It is the very pursuit of happiness that thwarts happiness. According to this, our forefathers basically put that quote in the Declaration of Independence to make sure that we'd be slaves to the corporate state. Real happiness comes from helping each other realize our true capabilities. The new Declaration of Independence, which we need, should say we have the right to liberty, happiness, and truth. Which I know sounds like a commercial for the new line of Ford trucks. The norms say if you pursue your passions, you don't get the monetary incentives. It's the system saying if you're not going to be drones within it, it will make you starve and lose your home. Monetizing what you love should be the goal, and not a point of judgment and shame. And universal basic income and automation helps us monetize and pursue our passions, which allows us to realize what our true capabilities are, which allows us to help others, which contributes to the large good of the species and all of our human legacy. And now we can find a way to actually make money off our, th off our thoughts rather than repetitive motions like masturbating behind a desk. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, whoever, uh, whoever you think might enjoy this video. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, you will probably enjoy my brand new hour of comedy that I am releasing on August 14th. Uh, it is available for pre-order on Bandcamp right now. And if you go to my website, you can exclusively listen to the whole album uh, without downloading it. 
uh, that's exclusively available on my website. You can also go to my Bandcamp, which is ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, the website is ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can check out some live stand-up comedy show dates as well. I'm going to be at the Indie Fringe for six shows uh, at the Comedy Sports in Indianapolis. I'm going to be performing on August 19th, 20th, 21st, 25th, 26th, and the 27th. Uh, on August 18th, I'm going to be at Yulzing in Bloomington, Indiana. And then after Indie Fringe, I'm going to be heading up to Michigan, so check out all the dates on my website. Uh, we are going to be taking two weeks off because of the release of the album and promoting that a little bit. So uh, stay tuned for new episodes in two weeks. Uh, thank you so much for supporting. Uh, make sure you check out all the links below from the Gumroad to the Patreon to the rest of uh, my albums on Bandcamp backlogs to uh, past forkful of noodles uh, and uh, and I really appreciate uh, everybody that comes out to the shows uh, and shares and likes the video. Thanks for getting into it.